Coming up in this show, I'm going to bring you my opening comments on the markets. Arby has a sample for you of our Future Speak video, and he's going to look at a bearish wheat pattern. I'll bring you a hot minute looking at the regional banks, that's KRE, with more trouble likely ahead. And then we're going to bring you for the first time a special bundle that's level one with our market condition indicator. What a deal. You got to see this. It's great for new members. And then I'm going to bring you my analysis on the S&P 500, looking at SPY for the next one to five months. Well, I'm going to sit and I'm going to do a stage show. And I know all my fans want to learn how to make some go. I've been cruising up and down for trades each and every night. And with my iPhone recliner, I know we're going to get it just right. I'll get inside your mind. We'll have a real good time. We're going to trade today. We got to trade today. Go ahead and sleep. Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in coming weeks, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market had a rough time of it last week as investors saw plunging prices in small banks and got an ambiguous message from the FOMC. The two banks most in focus were PacWest and uh, WAL, that's Western Alliance. Uh, PacWest down 60%, uh, and it was much worse during the week, uh, as they said they're going to need to raise some money, really spelling trouble. And I would say that Western Alliance, uh, which uh, did lose a lot of ground, uh, that uh, had a big bounce back, and that one doesn't seem quite as much trouble, uh, but those were the two really in focus, and really much worse for the week than they are here on Friday. But still, the market weighed very heavily by uh, those banks, and Tuesday saw big declines, and that was especially true because the oil prices were collapsing, and the oils weighed heavily on the market. Also, in the S&Ps lost about 40 points. Wednesday was the day that the FOMC was coming, and everybody uh, was anticipating that there would be an increase of 25 basis points, and then we would see a pause. Interesting language change that we saw there. One word, it might be very significant. They said in their message that uh, increases may be appropriate going forward. Now, that's a change because the previous uh, meeting, they said, increases will be appropriate. So that's a very, very slight change to the language. But at the same time, um, I think that the uh, the markets are making a big mistake uh, because uh, they are forecasting price cuts from the Fed. And plainly, I, I believe that's just not happening. Uh, the problem with the banks, they're not going to deal with that by cutting interest rates. And the recession, well, seems pretty elusive as growth is still there in the markets uh, and the uh, in the economy and uh, the uh, banking uh, uh, problems don't seem to be weighing on the markets uh, overall that much. So we don't see the indexes uh, collapsing. And it's all about Powell's credibility and the FOMC credibility. They want to make sure that they follow their policy and go for that 2% uh, inflation rate, and they are just not going to be cutting. Their answer to the bank problems will be answered by the FDIC, and I think we're going to see probably uh, them come out and say we're going to cover a uh, million dollars uh, in uh, for each uh, depositor instead of $250,000 to calm the markets. There are no price, there are no uh, interest rate cuts coming. And very likely that we will see them pause probably in the next meeting and stay where they are for the rest of the year. It will literally take a chaotic condition for and real good sign that inflation is coming in for the Fed to cut. So Wednesday, uh, on top of what 
the, the Fed said the banks were also plunging again, uh, and that uh, sent the stock market down 36 points on the S&P 500. Uh, Thursday, it was pretty much the same. Uh, again, weak banks and the S&P 500 down 33 points. The uh, the energy markets, you really have to look at that because the the crude oil price just absolutely plunged, coming from the 80s down into the low, uh, uh, below $65. That was just amazing. And those energy stocks uh, really moved down. You can look at XLE and see the damage that was done in there. So uh, that uh, decline in the oil price is very much about investors' concern about uh, recession. And that has really affected that energy market and put pressure, especially on the Dow, as the Dow was the, pretty much the worst index for the week, getting hit by the banks and the energies at the same time. Friday, well, the market got saved by good earnings out of Apple. Apple moving up about 4.5% here early in the day as they have revived iPhone sales. And uh, that brought in, uh, that rally brought in a lot of bargain hunting in the banks. And the S&P moved up uh, early in the day, up over 50 points, and is pretty much holding that right now. And that's despite much stronger employment numbers than expected. Uh, and wage inflation, that is picking up again. But nobody really cares right now about any of that, because it's really all about the banks. And if the banks are bouncing, then the stock market's going to be doing the same. Our analysis has shown a positive period for the stock market, which we projected would pause in the period in May as things got worse for the Russell. That has proven to be correct, and as the bank issues weighed on the indexes. And the, the pattern in, in the Russell and the S&P 500 on the short term are giving warnings. We did a special report on that for our level two, three, and four members, the ones that get our videos, uh, and that was posted on Thursday night. So uh, if you were not able to see that, that will not be posted on YouTube. It's not a free video, so you need to become a level two or higher member to be able to watch that special report. While the big picture for the stock market is still positive, and we still see that the market could be in decent shape into late summer, the short-term patterns, as we show in that special video, really say that you need to have some caution. We expect periods of relief as the banks bounce, and those could be some sizable bounces, but it also should be followed by sizable failures, as that special report details. And we think that we're going to see that kind of action, a sloppy market, into early June. That uh, will be very influenced, of course, by the banks. And in the hot minute coming up, I'm going to show you the regional bank index, the ETF on KRE. So make sure that you watch that. Stocks for the week, after this giant rebound here we got going on on Friday, the S&P 500 uh, still down about 1.5%. The Nasdaq down less than a percent, as that Apple really saved it. The Russell down about 1.25%. And, and as I said, the Dow is the weakest, down about 1.75%. As the uh, weight from the banks and the energy stocks uh, were pushed down on that index. <clears throat> Bond market really choppy in the week. 30s down about a point. 10-year yields only up one, only down uh, one basis point. So. It was uh, a kind of a mixed week in a volatile week for the bond market. The gold market, which we have been very bullish on and expected that it would get up to the levels that it did and even higher, is moving down sharply on this banking relief that's going on as there was a panic buying into the gold market. In the special that I did on Thursday night, at the end of it, I talk about the reasons that gold could have risk, and there was some reason for caution in gold and silver right now. Uh, that uh, warning of the peak uh, that we uh, have in there uh, is, is uh, something that I think you should pay attention to. Uh, and the uh, the chart, if you look at it in the weekly, has got a big shooting star in gold. So those are all a significant dollar. Unchanged on the week, uh, and it's really in bad shape. We really can see much lower prices in the dollar 
coming into later in the year. Oil, also horrible, but it's rebounding. It fell down to about 64 and bounced up to 71. And uh, we still think that it's got some big problems. And uh, uh, clearly, as investors see uh, demand fears, uh, as the recession that they see coming, which so far is not very visible, uh, is likely to keep pressure on that oil market. That is uh, the opening comments that I have for you, but there is certainly a lot coming up. Make sure you go to AskSlim.com and explore. Uh, if you're brand new, get acquainted. Uh, go to AskSlim.com and look at the special. Uh, just click on Learn More up on the top. There's a Level 1 bundle. This is a great way to get acquainted with Ask Slim and all the analysis and our style. Uh, on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like the video. Give it a thumbs up. And on Twitter, follow us at AskSlim. Any questions you have on anything I present here on our membership, information, education, and analysis, please write to Matt at AskSlim.com. This is a special. Uh, RB is going to bring you analysis on wheat. This is the sample of our Future Speak show. And RB does this every single Wednesday. Uh, just amazing analysis looking at 24 different futures contracts and indexes where RB teaches cycle analysis. And in wheat, there is likely a sell coming. And so this is an important sample. Remember, Future Speak is only available to people in level two, three, or four who get full access to our entire video library of, I don't know, 600, 700 videos, and there are 300 or so evergreen videos that are great teaching pieces. So you uh, really will love this piece. Ari, show them what you're thinking about wheat and that cell that is setting up pretty soon. So this is the wheat market also in a left-hand translation where this was that low. We had a one-week rally, and we are now selling off in the overall context of lower cycle lows, lower cycle highs, right? So a really clear bias to the downside that has been in place in wheat. There is a low that is due around 6.12, so around mid-June. Now, what's going on on the short term? We are only watching for a short setup in this market. This is really very bearish. If we go ahead and draw in our fibs, we don't have this minor low confirmed yet, but let's just assume that this is, is the low right here at 603.75. We'll be watching for a rally back into 650, up to around 665. We don't really want to see this much through 680, okay? And then we look for a move two new lows after that. So uh, th that's the overall setup in wheat. This is really firmly bearish. Uh, but keep in mind that there is this out of phase ghosted cycle that we have purposely left on the chart. Do you see how we sold off here and then had the rally off of that ghosted low and then turned down again? That's really what we'll be watching for is this ghosted low on the weekly to yield a minor influence on the upside, and then to get a sharp turn down again into that blue low. Okay, so that's how we're using out of phase cycles to give you that some of the evidence. The blue cycle is the dominant influence. The gray cycle is a minor influence. Okay, so that's really what we are doing here uh, in the wheat market. And it looks like the highest odds would be we are setting up for a pop that is really doomed to fail here in wheat. This low on the shorter term cycle is due around the early part of June, very much in line with what's going on on the weekly as well. Great work on that, RV. You can see the style of analysis is just superb. This is a hot minute on the regional banks, KRE. Of course, everybody is focusing on those banks as we've seen massive moves to the downside. I want to show you very quickly that index. That's the ETF, KRE, on those banks. I think this is very telling. And you get an idea about our cycle and analysis, that approach to the markets. This is KRE. And what we're looking at here is the weekly cycle analysis. You can see in the bottom the cycle brackets, which show 
show you the rhythms in the market right over here. This is money flows. That's what cycle analysis is. And it gives you the sense of when money is moving in the market and then when money is moving out of a market. There are key things about the shapes in here, translations, configurations, support resistance areas, and momentum conditions. Generally, when momentum turns down, as you could see right over here uh, on our reversal scout, it sets up the declining phases in the individual cycles. Same thing right over here, as you could see. Right over here, this was a little bouncy where it had a couple of them, and here's where it turned down right over here. One of the key things about these last couple cycles is that there was a good support set up there, as you could see, as the cycle low here and here set up the support. But once it breaks underneath that level, it likely declines, especially with momentum negative, as you, you could see with the reversal scout, it likely declines into the bottoming right there. There is a daily pattern that's on the daily chart that end, that comes into end of June. I'm sorry, early June. And that what really means to us is that this is likely to keep declining out into early June. So any rallies that you get in here, any bounces in the KRE, any days when you looks like it's over with in the banks between now and this early part of June is very, very likely to be incorrect and the market moving back to the downside. Of course, that has a lot to do with how the stock market is acting. So I would say, with our, as this uh, compares with our other analysis, the correlation suggests there is more to the downside coming in the banks and the stock market. This is a special membership bundle, level one membership plus the market condition monitor. That is our new application that is mind blowing. It's just fantastic way to get great sense for the conditions of the market, no matter what trading style you are. It just, there's a great way in there that you can just you know, tell it what trading style you are with a toggle, and then it brings up the appropriate uh, market conditions for uh, you and uh, there's over a hundred uh, symbols in there of all the key uh, stocks and ETFs that you'd be interested in. That's the MCM uh, you're going to get with our live bullish and bearish updates throughout the trading day. That is a live indicator and uh, no delay. It's just fantastic. Uh, you'll get our stock market report, daily technical snapshot charts and technical summaries that uh, Matt brings you on a daily basis. It is just very comprehensive. If you're a little longer term trader, uh, you'll get our Slimulator Momentum Tracker for position traders and investors, over a thousand symbols, and you'll be able to really see those market conditions uh, for your longer term holdings. You'll get our weekly Spider Sector ETF report. You will be uh, able to see our Ask Slim community Discord uh, channels and just uh, fantastic information always going on in there. And you will be able to attend the live events that we do bi monthly. With this is a great webinar with the whole analytical team, uh, and there's a Q&A in there, and you'll be able to really learn a ton. This is a 50% discount. It's only $75 for the first three months for everything we give you in level one and the MCM, our uh, live uh, uh, application that is fantastic. It's $150 value, but for the first three months, you'll only have to pay $75. You can go to AskSlim.com to the front uh, page, the top of that main page, and click Learn More. All that information that I just talked about and more is there for you uh, with some details, or write Matt at AskSlim.com for information, or if you need him to send you a link, uh, he will uh, answer you uh, very quickly. So the special membership bundle, Level 1, and the Market Condition Monitor, just absolutely fantastic. All right, bringing you the stock market analysis, projections on the S&P 500. But first, do read this important information. You could stop the video and get a sense for how we bring you this analytical information uh, and what this uh, all means uh, for you. Stock market, S&P 500. I'm going to give you a one to five month look at the SPY. Now, 
for months we've been talking about the effect of a cycle that is out of phase with the with the indexes with the other indexes and that is on the russell the russell has a longer cyclical pattern than the s p 500 or the nasdaq and we had believed that that would be an influence on the market and that may would bring a time when the market would be pulling back based on that we didn't really have a sense that the banking issues would be the one that would bring that to fruition, but that's really what we're seeing right now. Uh, and we're getting a rebound now, but based on everything that I see, the rebound that we're seeing right now on Friday here uh, on uh, May 5th is not likely to be able to hold up as there was a significant break in the short-term markets. Now, I'm only going to show you the intermediate term in here. And to see that full analysis uh, on that, you need to be a level two, three, or four member. We put out a special report on that Thursday night. Uh, and uh, if you are a free member, level one, you can just write to me at an upgrade uh, to level two to be able to watch that video, which uh, level two and up gets our full library uh, of videos. So um, I think it's really important to watch that video and you'll get the short the idea on the um, much deeper full analysis on the indexes and what that means let's look at the SPY and I'm going to give you a little detail in here especially if you're brand new these on the bottom are cycle brackets it's a drawing tool and it just helps us understand the energetics in the market the heartbeat of the market as they say as we learn from the money flows if you focus in on the minor cycle right in here you can see how the stock market traces that out now the lows can come either side of those ideals it doesn't really matter now this bigger green dash is that longer Russell and also it lines up with the FEZ the European markets uh, and that uh, is out of phase or a little bit longer than the uh, S&P 500 that you can see right in here so there again is that minor cycle minor cycle and minor cycle and you can see that the 33 week cycle from the Russell and the minor cycle here in the S&P 500 both come out to sometime in the early June period that means that this market, which is now stalling and curling over, and you could see it got down over here to the support level the last two weeks in the SPY, that means that this is likely peaking and will be coming down in here and influenced by the banks. Now, if you didn't watch the hot minute that I put out earlier in this show, go back and watch it because the KRE, the regional banks, align with this very significantly or closely. And that says to me that that the the issues in the bank is not over despite the fact that there's a bounce uh, coming uh, right now on Friday here so we're looking for continued choppy action and lower action here uh, out into late May out into potentially early June for the S&P 500 now <laughs> the support levels right over here uh, that's around 403. Uh, the middle, which is the 50% right over there, is just under 400, 399, and this is 394. This is the area we would expect that the S&P 500 would hold during this period where the Russell and the banks are in their declining or significant period of risk. And that stage is likely to continue to keep weighing on the S&P 500. But I want you to note that as you see right over here where the first cycle was positive, we call this a positive configuration. The probability of the second minor cycle here making a higher high is better than 70%. So what that means to us is that even if you come down in here and get into this area of 403, 400, a little bit lower, then it's likely that these this cycle right over here will take over again and this cycle will remain positive and you get this move up into late summer. Now, the longer term patterns in the VIX implied volatility are telling us that it's likely that the low in the VIX will come sometime in the late summer or early fall. And we've seen some pretty low prices in the VIX and a lot of volatility in the VIX recently, but really that is a time frame uh, out over here where the market could do better. 
Also, I want, I'm going to zoom in right over here so you can get an idea of these resistance levels. We had made a point that it was going to be pretty tough right now to get through the resistance right up over here, which was at around uh, 4200 or 402 uh, here uh, in the SPY, 4200 in the SPX. And you can see it got up there and it tried to keep getting up there, but then kept backing off. This is a tough spot uh for the uh for the s p 500 now we will continue to maintain a bullish sense a bullish bias out into late summer as long as these patterns hold up and this period here where the russell and uh the bank index and the uh, uh and the fez uh are continue their correction down into this time frame were this low to go and then the right around over here 388 the 78.6% which is not in there were that to get challenged then we would lower the upside projection this upper one would disappear and we would believe that a best case would be testing 4200 again this period this level over here of around 4300 or 430 in the spy is our longer term projection uh, for the peak for the year if this were to break below that level of 388 it would say something really bad for the market now in the special report we did i talk about the russell and the fact that the russell is in a much worse uh shape and that that could actually influence the entire market to not get up to that 4300 level and to actually get stuck in that short-term resistance area or just below it and then actually have a pretty rough time of it coming out in towards the end of the year so right now the important thing we're looking at is right over here which would be a period of the next we'll call it four four or five weeks that the market could have a lot of risk the probability of getting through here very low right now the probability of getting down into the support area very high right now so that's why we call this just a uh, intermediate minor cycle correction in here that then again would be setting up a rising phase over here to get up to those levels that would make this a buying opportunity while this bank shakeout is going on um, the m people would be asking, well, this is a pretty good pattern. The market hasn't given up a lot of ground yet. Well, one of the problems is, is that the market has not really fully factored in the earnings recession that is likely just ahead. And looking out at earnings growth that I think is just not not reality so we're probably going to see uh, s p downgrades and earnings going forward as we're seeing right now a lot of uh, a lot of forecasts coming out of big companies that are not good apple uh, microsoft those are heavyweights uh, in the spx index equaling about 14 percent of the index and those have really held this up and apple's getting a big pop today on its earnings report but uh, when that's over over with the market is likely to be moving down again so again a lot of risk over here and when I say a lot of risk there's actually liquidation risk when you get into this type of a period right over here and what we want to do really see is a worst case 400 uh, down to about 394 as a worst case uh, in this period and we would call that a really decent buying opportunity going forward that is a look at the spy for the next one to five months and those uh, influences that we see in the russell the banking index uh, that we have talked about for quite a long period of time all very much in line and all just part of what we think is a corrective period here for the stock market with higher prices later in the summer that is it i hope you found that just fantastic this is our membership bundle. If you didn't see this earlier in the show, please pay attention to it now. You can get our level one membership plus our amazing market condition monitor. 
that is our standard premium version of that so you're going to get just a, a great look at the market in all time frames all conditions for all different type styles of traders you get everything that's listed on here 50 percent discount 75 dollars for the first three months for all of this a value of 150 dollars this is a great way to get acquainted with the work that we do uh, and uh, if you uh, want to sign up for that go to the front of the main page click learn more up at the top at slim.com and uh, i'll take you for a lot of inf uh, show you a lot of information there or you can write to me at slim.com for more info any questions that you might have <clears throat> that is it for this show please do go to our slim website subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the uh, thumbs up because then we know that you like it. Watch our member videos in the playlists and follow us at Ask Slim uh, on Twitter. Uh, again, write to Matt at Ask Slim for any questions that you may have. I want you to be so unbelievably careful. It is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the and I'm going to do a